and Mumbai have been ranked the fourth and seventh most polluted cities of the world by Swiss Air Monitor IQ Air. How can we combat this alarming rise of toxic air in our cities? That's our focus on the urban agenda. Bhavin, let, let me come to another rather large issue, the rising number of private vehicles. And the way I see it is that it's, you know, there's a lot of improvement in public transport. I mean, we are now number three in terms of the metro network in the world. Uh, maybe still not enough as per population, but Delhi has the longest metro, almost 400 kilometers. We have a rapid metro coming up. We also have e-buses. Uh, we'll have a fair, fairly large number of uh, EVs, about 800 right now operational, 2000 electric buses are going to be operational in the capital by end of 2023. Yet the number of private vehicles is going up. So my question to you is, are we making it too easy for people to buy cars, park them on public land? And does something need to shift there? Now we allow them to park everywhere. We allow cars to be outside on public uh, roads. Uh, our parkings, uh, etc. are so um, uh, so negligible. And uh, even coming to Grab 2 now, when you increase the price is uh, just a joke. Uh, if you compare it to the rest of the metros in the world, uh, you know, these are, uh, again, the low emission zones. We have no low emission zones outside schools, hospitals. So everything is about uh, policy because if you ask people to give up cars, nobody will give it up. That's not, it's, it never happens that way. They have to be pushed. You know, people have to be pushed towards taking decisions. But then, uh, like you said about the public transport, metro is not uh, really uh, one of the uh, uh, best public transports for a country like ours because it will be the buses and we are still awaiting a lot of buses. They have ordered, there are e-buses expected, but as of now, we really have nothing. If you I, speak to the masses yes. at, of Delhi, they will never take a metro because they cannot afford it one. Second, that's, there is no last mile connectivity. And we have also cut hundreds and thousands of trees to make that metro. So, uh, I mean, it's again, uh, I'm talking about the balance and the holistic approach. Of course, uh, we, you know, we need it and we don't need it. This is something because they're the top uh, brains there, you know, as officials here, you know, who are, uh, you know, coming in, into these conversations. They know what to do. But uh, sorry to say, I mean, I, I even couldn't complete there that we in Mumbai, they lost 2,028 hectares of tree cover, which is one and a half times the size of our forest in only five years. So, so that can never be compensated. We are cutting five trees an hour in Delhi with permissions and the illegal felling is all, uh, you know, separate. So, so we have to now kind of put a, a pause to, to, to this kind of uh, approach. And we know what compensatory afforestation is about. We know what tree transplantation is all about. And uh, the, the recent, uh, you know, project uh, that's being talked about, 3,000 trees are being uprooted in Mumbai on an Olympic size uh, swimming pool for, to make that. Are we, is that what we need or we need clean air? You know, it's, so it's, it's just about very, uh, very uh, tough I mean, balancing act because people also need transportation systems and flyovers and highways and coastal roads. I mean, there, there are no easy answers. But I think I'd really like to f focus on something that other cities have managed to do extremely well, which is deter private vehicles in very, uh, Singapore has got it right. Why are we not, Mr. Case, but looking at the richer you are, the more cars you have, the more public space you are actually uh, encroaching upon. And nobody is paying for that in public space. I mean, not just in Delhi, in Mumbai, you will see at night people go and park their cars outside around hospitals, around parks, around any public space which is open in markets because their own apartments don't have enough car parking spaces. Why are we not looking at really making it extremely expensive for people to have more than one car and any parking in public spaces to be prohibitively expensive to deter cars? Mr. Kesbat? Manisha, as you rightly said that like Singapore has put the cap on the registration of vehicles every year. After that, they will just the have the cap on that. Similarly, L London ultra low emission zone has made explicitly clear that no uh, diesel vehicle should be allowed into the entering into the city of London or there would be the heavy penalty or toll they have to pay. And it has been discouraged electric vehicles, uh, cycling and walking and the metro infrastructures to the peoples. And now the 
our cities be it delhi or bombay uh, or mumbai we can say that it's a it's new to be people center but it has remained the car centers in the entire uh, the city planning and the city governance so that's remain the challenge let us see the all the uh, the uh, the transportation emission uh, if we see in the both as bhavrin rightly pointed out that we need to we need to control we need the to plan. rethink we really need to rethink private ownership of cars in this country i mean i have seen personally people are going to india gate for a drive one person will go one person will go in another car or two people will go in another car just 15 minutes later there is absolutely no recognition even amongst common citizens to optimize car usage and they just feel a you know prosperous family more cars and the more irresponsible driving is happening everywhere in india and i think that's on the citizens but we still need some push from the government unfortunately we've run out of time uh, dr modgare i'll all right go ahead sir make a point on this one i'm making the point see the maharashtra has introduced electric vehicle policy in 2021 this is newly adopted and in the for the mumbai city under the national clean air program we have nearly 2780 ev buses will be flying within a span of 2 years that is a public transportation system and you know the mumbai maximum population travels by the public transportation and uh, we have we are not allowing any 8 year old uh, diesel vehicle commercial vehicle to be flying so this is a mass this will be a massive transformation into the public transportation by introducing ev already a national clean air program and 15 finance commission have a massive uh, uh, outlay for this purchase and already tenders are out some vehicles are already on flying on the road i think okay. there will be crucial changes in the transportation well we hope so sir we hope so sir uh, thank you so much for telling us that at least there is there is this intention to overhaul the transportation system to cleaner transport uh, thank you very much all three of you for taking out the time to join me and i'm just going to conclude by saying something a rising and proud india cannot really fail to take care of something as basic as its citizens right to breathe clean and healthy air and everyone from state to center to municipal corporations to citizens ourselves have to wake up much ahead of time to combat this massive health crisis Thanks so much for joining me and goodbye.